What is up guys and welcome to another video. It's your boy The Life of Soul aka The Bodybuilding Banker and in this video I'll be discussing why you are not getting any investment banking offers. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. So guys this is a bit of an impromptu video. I'm sat in my car, the sun is beating and I thought to myself I get a ton of questions in relation to hey Soul how do I land an investment banking internship? Hey Soul I have no experience. How do I get interviews? And I understand. I remember being in university and facing that challenge of how do I learn the first role? How do I learn my first internship? When I come to an interview, what do I even say? And it would have been really, really helpful if I had someone to guide me through the process. So in this video, I'm going to talk about why you are not getting offers and ways you can quickly fix that. So make sure you stay tuned to the end. The first thing and probably the most easiest fix is just to simply increase your volume of applications. Investment banks receive thousands and thousands of applications. And in order to increase the probability of success, you need to make sure you are sending out a ton of applications. Imagine a situation where you've landed a role or an interview at least in one of the largest investment banks for the desired role. However, this is your first interview. Now, it goes without saying, people know practice makes permanent. Although you might be excellent for the role, you might just be completely nervous. And unfortunately, with investment banking, the standards are high. If you don't come across well in an interview, you might not get the full time offer. Take a situation now where you've sent multiple applications and you've actually had three or four or maybe even 10 interviews prior to getting the interview at the bank you want. You're going to come a lot more confident. I'll give you an example. I was interviewing for a buy side role. Um, buy side is basically private equity, venture capital. Now, you do a lot of case studies, a lot of modeling tests, and you get a lot of technical interviews. Obviously, for investment banking, you develop your technical expertise through valuation and modeling and working on deals. But some questions you haven't heard before. Now, I've done a previous interview process where I heard a question I had never heard before. I'll be open with you guys. I struggled. However, following doing another interview, I heard a very, very similar question, although it wasn't exactly the same word for word. But because I had done a previous interview, I understood the structure. I was able to get that question right and ultimately get an offer. Another benefit to sending many applications is that you can quickly identify your weaknesses. By doing many interviews, even if you don't receive an offer, if you ask for feedback, you can identify weaknesses that you were not aware of and turn them into strengths. I know we're taught not to fail. However, many people fail their way to success. And what I mean by that is by taking action, by doing several interviews and learning the different processes, learning where you're weak at, you can turn those weaknesses into strengths and be better prepared for the next interview. And another really, really important reason is that you're not networking hard enough. When it comes down to it, investment banking is full of people, right? People like you and me. And by human interaction, we understand when we've met someone, we're likely to be a lot more warmer. If I had met you, say, over coffee or we'd spoken over phone, we'd done an interview, just through natural human interaction, I'm likely to take more warmly to you and our interview or conversation can go better. So how are ways you can increase your networking? LinkedIn. We live in a world where the six degree of freedom no longer exists. You're even maybe three degrees of freedom away from someone very popular, i.e. you know someone or you're in connection with someone who knows someone. So how do I increase that? Go on LinkedIn, go to the relevant investment banks and find out key decision makers, key people. This could be associates. This could be vice presidents. Look at the different banks that are doing deals. Go and look at the M&A league tables if you want to get an investment banking. Look at some of the banks that are performing very well. If they're performing very well and they're doing a lot of deals, they lead, need a lot of manpower. And if they need a lot of manpower, they're going to be hiring. Reach out to recruiters. These could be recruiters at the various top investment banks. These could be university recruiters. Or these could be recruiters that source for different investment banks. What I'm trying to tell you is there's many ways to skin a cat. But the first thing you have to do is take action. Now, if you guys want me to go for a separate video where I talk about how to improve your networking skills, please give me 300 likes and I will create a separate video on how to effectively use LinkedIn and other tools in order to increase your networking and increase your likelihood of receiving an offer. LinkedIn is not the only way you can reach out to other people in investment banks. Events are a fantastic way where you meet people in person and you can make genuine connections. I'll give you an example. I wanted to get into one of the leading investment banks 
and I had graduated from university. I had offers from other, other investment banks, but I really, really, really wanted to get into this investment bank. I was searching the internet and I actually found out an event they were holding at my university and I applied and I still went. I was a graduate. I was based in London, but I still went to my university in order to connect to these people. And it made a huge difference. I went there prepared. I went there diligent. I had loads of questions and they noticed I was really, really confident, but also really keen. And that helped me secure an interview and effectively an offer. So what am I telling you? I'm telling you guys to take action, seek out opportunities, seek out networking events, whether it's virtual talks, in-person talks, career fairs, wherever you can find key people that you believe that can help you in your journey, make sure you seek them out and make sure you prepare diligently and this will increase your chance of getting an investment banking offer. So if you're still in university, this is actually a lot more easier and you can use LinkedIn effectively. If I was at university, I would go onto LinkedIn I will find people at my university that are at some of the top investment banks and I'll go and speak to them. You know, I'll send them a message and try to get a coffee with them and make sure I make a good impression. The reason why this is important, because often the case, especially if they've received a full time offer from the investment bank, they're normally given the role as an ambassador. What does that mean? They've given some sort of responsibility in order to push the recruitment effort. And if they find someone who's very, very good and impresses them, they can actually help them or put in a good word to get them an interview. So if you can seek out people at your university, whether it's in the same sports team, same society, or just on a night out and make a good impression of them and show them your you're hungry to get an investment banking, they can recommend you. And not only can they recommend you, they can actually help you in your interview process so you get a full-time offer. And when you do the interview, what's actually going to be super helpful is when you're talking to the interviewer, you can actually name drop and mention them and that will give you added credibility, that will build momentum and that definitely help you and increase your chances of securing an offer. Guys, I keep wiping my face, it's extremely hot. It's funny because in the UK, we always complain about the weather and now... When we get a bit of heat, I'm out here complaining, but it's fine. It's cool. I'm still going to deliver this video for you. Another way in order to increase your chances of getting into investment banking is to devise a plan. There's an age old saying that says you've got to step back sometimes to move forward. What do I mean by this? Well, investment banking is extremely competitive. And what's even more competitive is to get into the front office roles. What a front office these are the likes of traders and investment bankers and in some banks, asset managers. And these are the revenue generating divisions of the investment bank. Everybody wants to be in front office and it can be extremely competitive. However, if you devise a plan, it might take you a little longer, but apply to back office or maybe middle office and then work your way. You have more of an chance of building an opportunity to get into the front office. It may take you longer, for example, but you still create the opportunity and chance to break in. So what am I saying here, guys? I'm telling you to spread your eggs in different baskets. This increases the probability of you getting an investment banking internship. By applying not only to front office, but also back office roles, you increase the likelihood of you landing an interview and effectively an investment banking internship. Even if you land a role within a middle office, say at a top tier investment bank, and even you join the team and you do a couple of years, you now have relevant experience and credibility. Now, I know many people who have done middle office or even back office roles at some of the leading investment banks, but they've used the opportunity to, in order to develop their skills, make sure they produce quality work. But most importantly, tying down to my previous point, network. And when you have your foot in the door and you're able to network with different individuals and build key relationships with that experience behind you, you are able to forge a path into a front office role. As I was saying, guys, back office give you a fundamental understanding of the different divisions in the investment bank. You can actually make a more informed decision as to whether you see yourself in that front office role. You can build key key relationships with key decision makers and some of the front office people and if you build those great relationships with people in the front office they can tell you who their hiring managers are you can build relationships with them and honestly it takes an effort for investment banks to recruit and sometimes it's even easier to do internal recruiting and if you build trust through high quality work flexibility and they know you this will increase your chances of getting that front office role so get networking. Another reason I'm noticing that's becoming a lot more common is people give up way too easily. 
Listen, investment banking is extremely competitive. You can get rejected numerous of times, but you have to keep knocking on the door. What do I mean by this? If you enter university and you apply to spring weeks and you don't get it, that's fine. Apply the following year, apply to a summer internship, apply to a graduate role. If that doesn't work out, apply to a role very, very similar to investment banking. For example, the insurance industry, the accounting industry. One thing I'm beginning to notice is some accountants make fantastic investment bankers because a lot of the job involves understanding accounting, so understanding interaction with the free financial statements. What do I mean by this? The cash flow statement, the income statement, and the balance sheet. And some people that I know that are working in accounting that have switched to investment banking have a very, very good technical acumen and, and technical grasp of the role. A common question I get is, so, I didn't go to a target university. I don't necessarily have the grades. Can I get into investment banking? And my answer to this, it depends on you. I was fortunate enough to go to a target university, but I know many friends who have gotten to the top investment banks and they didn't necessarily go to what was deemed a target university. But what they did show is perseverance. What do I mean by this? They might not have got the grades, for example. They might not have even attended a target university, but they worked extremely hard in university. They either got their 2-1, they got their first. Some people I even know got a 2-2, two -two, but it's more rare, as you know, because it's a 2-1 minimum needed to get an investment banking. But these guys kept knocking. They would go to relevant events. They would meet people. I know of a friend who done extremely well, who actually went to another job outside of investment banking. He done the relevant quali qualifications such as the CFA, and he made himself technically equipped so that when he done the interviews, he was ready to perform and he got an offer at one of the leading investment banks. So guys, what am I saying? I understand it's difficult, but try not to fall at the first hurdle. Keep knocking on the door till someone presents you with an opportunity. There's so many ways to get into investment banking and you don't have to go through the traditional route of spring, summer and full time offer. You can do a number of internships at multiple investment banks. Do you develop the relevant experience? You can go for a master's program. So essentially a master's program, if you finish university, gives you the opportunity to apply to a summer internship. And generally, especially if the master's is relevant to the job, you increase your opportunity to get a full time offer because you have a better grasp and technical understanding and you're just a lot more mature. But I know several mature people that have entered the investment bank that have come for different career paths, whether it's from the army, whether it's from being a doctor, whether it's from nursing, whether it's consulting, as long as you can present yourself as a very credible candidate and show that you have the desire and the technical acumen, you'll be able to land a job in investment banking. The final thing I'm going to say is that you are not getting the basics right. What do I mean by this? Things such as your CV and your cover letter are not up to the standard. Recruiters receive thousands and thousands of applications and your CV is an opportunity to stand out to the recruiter. It's an opportunity to make the best first impression. And so not having a CV that is well formatted, not having a CV that is one page, not having a CV that has effective action words that are related to the job experience do not help you in your cause in landing the role. If I'm a recruiter and I'm going through hundreds of CVs and I see some CVs that are maybe two pages, it's too much time for me to go through two pages. I want to see the key highlights in your career presented effectively on one page. And so what I'll do most likely is just discount your CV. So you might be a great candidate. You might have great experience, great technical expertise. But because you don't have an effective CV that meets the standard required, you won't land an opportunity to present yourself in interview. Fortunately for you guys, there is a lot of information out there that can help you write an effective CV. If you just check out here on my YouTube channel, I go through how to write an effective CV to make sure that you can land interviews at some of the top investment banks. You, should, you can also check out my website where I provide CV templates that have been successful at the likes of Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley and Bank of America. So this makes it very, very easy for you to write a stellar CV. I also provide information on cover letters. And if you want more specific advice tailored to yourself, you can book a one-to-one -one call with me in order to go through your application and give you a plan of strategy. And finally, if you have any other questions, feel free to comment below and reach out on my Instagram just over here and ask me any specific questions you have in relation to getting into investment banking. Now, thank you guys if you made it to the end. I really appreciate you. 
If you enjoyed this sort of content, be sure to give me 200 likes and comment on what you want to see next. As you know, these investment banking videos take a lot of time to make, but I do enjoy educating and giving people help because I wish I had this sort of support when I was breaking into the industry and I always try and uplift my community. So be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Stay tuned. It's your boy, The Life of Soul, aka The Bodybuilding Banker, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.